who was your muse? An imaginary me is quite often the muse, you know, so trying to redress all my mistakes by making a beautiful song sound like I'm saying sorry. <laughs> right. When, uh, as soon as the song's done, I'm off doing whatever I do. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I suppose, <clears throat> the, so, the lyrics and the, the themes are always about this kind of... It's not even a circle, it's almost like a triangular bounce off... off you know, my own with the walls in my heart, mind and soul and stuff. It's it's kind of it's weird, it's kind of. But you know, at that moment when you write something, it resonates deeply. And yeah. You can say the song is ready to be consumed by the public, or I can yeah. present it to the band. And yeah, and the thing with song, I, I kind of, I sometimes do feel a bit not guilty, but if I haven't written enough lyrics, you know, I, I do tend to. I'm a fan of um, the third verse being pretty much the first one again, or with maybe a, a, a twist on it. Except change a pronoun or something. Yeah. Or make yeah. a word or, yeah. or a twist on the word that maybe the delivery of the. And the it can final be verse. it can be the same words in a way, but the meaning can be totally different. The double entendre meaning yeah. of the word. Yeah. And by singing it differently, or with a kind of there's a way of singing with a question mark. Without having it, without it having to be a, a literal question. Well, lips like sugar could certainly fall yeah. into that yeah. very easily. There could be four or five different meanings, depending on your perspective, female, male. <coughs> Definitely. I mean, and she flows like one. That could be just the muse, you know, that right. that kind of comes and goes and and intrigues and stuff. You know, it, it's. And that's what's good about, hopefully what's good about our songs and my lyrics is that with time they've become stronger. Because I know when I wrote Lips Like Sugar I thought, this isn't my, this isn't how I normally write, you know, it's kind of, it was very she this and, right. and physical, you know, physical facial features coming into the side in a different way. I, but trying to make it sound like it could Less be about... Less metaphor and more... Yeah. Yeah, more, more to the nose, right? Why don't you take a swig of your beer? I know oh, yeah. What song do you think is the most obtuse lyric that you've written that you think people have misinterpreted the most? Maybe The Killer Moon, I mean, because... But that's the great thing about The Killer Moon. It's, it's a song that every... It, it doesn't belong to everyone, but there's a kind of... There's a, a spiritual miss to that song that um, makes it more than a song. I mean, I've, I've, well, it's got a metaphysical yeah. edge to it. And I've, I've said in an interview, the reason that's the best song of all time is because it, it's about everything, because of that metaphysical thing. So it's, I didn't approach it as a song particularly. It was, I wanted it to have a nice tune, but I felt that I'd hit something like, like, like poets did, you know, where a, th a thought or an idea about the meaning of life is hidden within the words, and even the writer doesn't know where it's hidden. And that's how I feel about that song, that's in between, in the gaps between this voice and the guitars, and the, there's some real, really deep meaning in that song um, and I, I was talking to my agent last night who's, who's a good friend of mine um, I'd, I said to him I'm having problems singing that at the minute because it's not the way I hear it anymore the, the, just the band playing and I'm thinking of not doing it tonight because or maybe doing it as an encore because it needs to be separate in a way from, from it's, it's in the wrong place in the set or something but I don't think the band are playing it right. It's not their fault. I haven't told them what this is. Because when I do it me, by myself in a radio station on a guitar, it, that sounds, pardon me, it sounds right. Because right. Cause I know that that's the space, that the, the hidden thing 
is then the more you, it's stripped down, the more I'm, I'm likely to find what the meaning is every time I sing it. So the song, it sounds like it's evolved since you first delivered it. Definitely, and, and yeah. You've evolved as a person, so it's, you've taken it to another place. Well, closer to the Killer Moon, I suppose. You know, it's it's the it's predestiny and and the unavoidability that something is going to end, you know, and change, and, and it guided by or and dictated by the, this Killer Moon of mine. You know? And I, I, it's kind of. I've oft, I've said as well at the funeral, which I'm not planning to have for quite a while, but uh, I'd like that song to be the song. Because, um, yeah, I mean, it's perfect. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's... Great answer. It's so, great answer. so that, that, you know, people might listen to the Killer Moon. It's not that they, they've misinterpreted it. I, I think most people let it stand as, as a great song, but I think they know that it... It affects them. It makes them think. I think about what is it? You know, fate up against you. Well, it's not your standard chorus um, lyric through the thick and thin. It's you know, it's I do. I remember when I uh, I had the verse and everything. I had the chords to the chorus, but I didn't have the lyric. And one morning, so I think it was it was a bright morning. You know, it was like it was spring or summer. Or something. I remember waking up and sitting sitting upright with the lyrics for the chorus in my head and it was if, I, if I've ever had divine intervention inspiration that was it I felt that I'd been given this it didn't say any thought because it came it came through my sleep and, and I woke up with this thing you know so uh, you know I'm not saying that well I have said that you know God wrote it for me but well, you and you know, Dylan once said that he's just a receptacle for all of this creativity. Yeah, that you can't. That sometimes those you just channel that, that energy. Yeah, because I mean, it does. It's odd how, you know, you can just be sitting somewhere and you pick up a guitar and all of a sudden a phrase comes and it's not. The best ones don't come from sitting down thinking. You know, not in song. I don't think. You know, having to plot out a thing. It, it's it's like wow, that's that's the obvious lyric. And it comes. It can be in the shower, in in a restaurant. Nothing lasts forever. It was in, I was I was buttering some bread, rolling, and I had the melody. And I, was, I think the chorus. I I had a vague idea of, of where what the lyric was going to be about. But I was I was buttering some bread in my favourite restaurant, in Liverpool, which is closed now, the Alouette. And it was I want it now. I want it now. I think I knew it, I want it now, but I didn't. It took me that bread buttoning thing to realise that I had to repeat it, and that was it, simple. Right, right. Well, we got the high sign that we have to shove off here because you've got a, you're a busy man, you've got well, a busy schedule, but we'll sit down and talk yeah, at great have, length. I, I would love to do that. Let's, well, let's do it later after the gig. And, uh, Shall we do that? Do some beers and all that. All right, that'd be great. Fantastic. All right, so we'll get back to you. Cheers. Inside it's just the blues I'm singing. 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 This vidcast was sponsored by Absolute Poker. Do you like to play poker? You need to visit Absolute Poker.